Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today we'll, uh, we will talk about the different imaging modalities for the prostate cancer. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Jamal, resident of urology. My moderator is Dr. Tanji. Imaging for uh, prostate cancer. So our uh, learning objectives are trust, MRI, multi-parametric MRI, pyrides, PET skin, and bone skin. Last but not least, <clears throat> trust. Transrectal ultrasonography of the prostate provides multiple diagnostic utilities, including assessing uh, prostate volume, locating focal abnormalities, assessing patients with infertility with suspicion of obstruction, and guarding prostate biopsies. So, uh, trust is also most widely used clinical imaging method for the prostate is also and also essential prostate cancer biopsy guidance uh, how prostate appear on trust and how we will do the uh, trust and uh, how to evaluate the prostate as a help of transrectal ultrasonography first of all uh, we will take the patient on uh, left lateral position and this, this one, this is the uh, TUS probe. This one, we uh, have to envelop the TUS probe uh, as a enveloper as a, or a condom to uh, protect the uh, chances of the infection and uh, the help of azylic angel. And we will insert uh, this probe to the NS. The ideal uh, ideal uh, uh, insertion places to the anorectal junction, not to the to the complete rectum because it will be so painful. The pre uh, uh, pre uh, so we, when we will do a truss, we, we will ask the patient to empty the full bladder so that will help the patient for the less painful. And also we will see the post wide residual in the urinary bladder. <clears throat> this is the images of prostate, the heart shape image of the prostate. And this is the, uh, there's one the capsule of the prostate. And this one is the peripheral zone homogeneous. This one, and this is the cystic lesion of the prostate. And the, this is the calcification of the prostate in large prostate around. This is the real picture of our, our uh, center in ER1. And this, uh, at uh, 130 prostate volume is the 130 now and this one how to evaluate the volume of the prostate this is the ap diameter this one this is the longitudinal and this is the transverse and this is the longitudinal and this is the central zone of the prostate and this is the urethra this one is the urinary bladder So trust in prostate cancer, standard trust is not reliable at detecting prostate cancer. Prostate cancer appears as hypoechoic area in peripheral zone. Not all cancer appear as a hypoechoic area on a skin and up to 40% cancer are esoechoic. Hypoechoic area is not a specific finding for malignancy and can be present in benign conditions such as prostatitis. Role of trust in prostate cancer used for local staging of prostate cancer. Diagnostically, transrectal ultrasound is used to measure the volume of prostate gland, an important factor in computing PSA density. Moreover, the volume as measured with transrectal ultrasound can be used in staging and in predictive uh, nemograms. When a prostate cancer is suspected, the, diagnose, the diagnostic test of choice is a systemic needle biopsy with ultrasound guidance. So, uh, role in detection of the extra uh, prostatic involvement, capsular bulging and irregularity, obliteration of the fat flans, sensitivity of extra prostatic involvement varies uh, from 50 to 90 percent and specificity of 37 to 85 percent this one the literature 
रोल ऑफ रशियन प्रोस्टेट कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट ट्रांसडेक्टर अल्ट्रासाउंड कंटिन्यूज टू प्ले इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन थेरेपी एज अ डायरेक्टिंग ब्रेक इन थेरेपी सीड्स इन टू द प्रोस्टेट and also the cryotherapy of the prostate also requires ultrasound guidance as it has high intensity focus ultrasound which coupled with ultrasound targeting as used for focal ablation of prostate cancer also so new treatment approach such as hyperthermia photodynamic therapy direct injection of the oncolytic virus tumor vaccines and gene therapy also depend on transrectal ultrasound for easy access to cancer of the prostate the newer modalities new suno uh, graphic modalities provides promising preliminary findings either alone or combined with so called multi parametric ultrasound micro doppler suno elastography contrast enhanced ultrasound and high resolution micro ultrasound however these techniques will uh, still have limited clinical applicability due to lack of standardization lack of large scale evaluation of inter reader variability and unclear result in transition zone so the conclusion is trus is portable easy to use and readily available and and can uh, easily assess prostate volume because of its limitations trus may not be an accurate tool for staging prostate cancer use of uh, power doppler can increase rates of detection to some extent Newer techniques such as uh, contrast and hands truss have been reported and studied to increase sensitivity for tumor detection. So we have uh, Dr. Amit Lalwani with us. So is there any role of uh, cancer detection uh, during truss, and what is the sensitivity of that truss? Truss sensitivity in detecting the lesion in the prostate is about forty to fifty percent, and which is also depend upon the experienced radiologist because a very subtle lesion and uh, does not always rely on the hypoechoic lesion because sometimes prostatitis kind also appear as hypoechoic areas in the peripheral zone, but uh, when there is a hypoechoic areas with increased vascularity along with uh, which can raise in the suspicious. And in our days, also prostate elastography, which is very helpful, which you show that if there is a stiffness is there in the, this lesion, that is yield the more sensitivity in the uh, in the sensitivity of uh, suspicion of the prostatic cancer. Okay. Uh, so there are so many uh, new technologies are emerging, like a nano bubble uh, technique with the contrast enhanced imaging of ultrasound. Uh, so uh, is the you have seen any? you know bubble technique and uh, any but these these are ex experimental we did not find any video if you if you find the video then we can present in this presentation we are only read in the literature and books uh, otherwise we haven't observed as at yet and uh, these are the technique in which the micro bubble size been injected into the iv and uh, depend in same like uh, ct scan like uh, iv is contrast has been given and uh, those prostatic uh, lesion which are more vascular that pick up the contrast and uh, that can increase the yield of the detecting the prostatic cancer but they are it still is not available in the pakistan <laughs> um uh, dr amit uh, we read about uh, contrast enhanced truss so uh, it is the same machine which we do uh, truss with and we inject that contrast or there is some hardware uh, upgradation or also required for this technique the machine is remain same only the micro bubbles and uh, the contrast has been given and then uh, on the which there is a contrast uptake in the truss on which can be seen on the truss ultrasound which can be same ultrasound is machine can be used but for prostate elastography the updates after has been required and otherwise the for the micro bubble technique though up, no upgradation of a machine has been and it's not experimental it is now uh, not only discussed but also it has been widely uh, addressed in literature also so both these techniques the nano bubble and the cus now they are discussed on platforms like asco and uh, 
And, and since nothing is needed, just uh, another kind of uh, contrast medium, which uh, can be injected and uh, can concentrate on the area where you want to have it. Uh, it has got many other purposes beyond prostate also. So uh, this is something which is coming up because of many reasons, because of its portability, because of its uh, low cost, because of its uh, availability to many other areas. For instance, you can move it to many different uh, rooms within the same hospital or maybe within the same city to different hospitals. So with one machine, you can do justice to many patients, to many pathologies. So th this is the kind of uh, advantage with this uh, technique. Um, with multi-parametric MRI, you, you've got to have a lot of money in, in your pocket and it cannot be moved. Uh, once it is there, it is there in the hospital um, in which it is. Dr. Amit, uh, can we say that uh, trust is only specific to examine the uh, hypoechoic area of the prostate? For the prostatic CA or other pathologies? Prostatic CA or prostate other pathology? Yes, the Dr. Jamal has also has been explained in this presentation. Prostatic CA not always is hypoechoic. Sometimes they are also appear as isoechoic lesions. So it is not necessary that it is a hypoechoic lesion in the prostatic CA. But is a, if because of the more prostatic CA appear as hypoechoic, so that is isoechoic also very difficult to detect on the ultrasound. So it is not necessary that appearing hypoechoic lesion. Hmm. Uh, may I answer this question a little further? You see, uh, uh, for any uh, probe which is used for ultrasound, you can have a spectral image uh, which gives you the uh, echogenicity. But if you combine it with Doppler, you can have a, a, a pretty good idea about the uh, vascularity of that organ. If that concept is applied through trust, and uh, I have also used it uh, some way back uh, many years, uh, you, you can have a very good understanding of uh, the prostate you are dealing with. Either the prostate is having a lot of blood vessels, blood supply. That means that the prostate is in a stage. Maybe it's in uh, inflammation. Maybe it's prostatitis. You can also have a kind of a ratio between the vessel as well as uh, um, uh, parenchyma. So uh, th there is a formula for it. You can also have it uh, for detection of carcinoma where the ratio between the vessel and the, and the parenchyma is altered slightly differently. You can also guide your uh, needle, for instance, the five o'clock and the seven o'clock position where the neurovascular bundle actually enters and exits the prostate by having this mode of transmission turned on. For instance, if, you are, if your needle is going towards a five o'clock position for the biopsy and you think that you might hit a vessel, then an intelligent ultrasonologist can always have this information by just putting a finger on the Doppler, whether the vessels are there or not. So there are many things that can be explored. It's not only isoechoic or hypoechoic regions that can be seen through, uh, through, through trust. So it's a tool, it can be used intelligently. Uh, CT scan, it has uh, virtually normal and prostate cancer detection or primary tumor staging. CT does not provide sufficient soft tissue contrast beyond size assessment of the prostate. The major role of CT is in the nodal staging of prostate cancer. As you uh, see in show, enlarged, enlarged left external iliac nodes. This one is the suggestive of nodal metastasis. So CT has been used to monitor bone metastasis, but bone scanning and MR image are superior to CT in the diagnosis of bone metastasis. Lytic and bastic bone metastasis will commonly be visible at CT also. So role of MRI. MRI offers increasingly reliable visualization of potentially significant prostate cancer. The advantages of MRI to uh, better select patients uh, for biopsy, to facilitate direct targeting of lesion during biopsy, information for staging tumor extent, and monitoring treatment response. 
this is the, the anatomy of the prostate the help of mri this this one this is the prefer zone of the prostate this one the, the is the capsule of the prostate the transition zone this one is the neurovascular bundles and bilateral chart this one is the seminal vesicles the key advances that have contributed to the increased clinical utility of mri for the prostate is include uh, the use of magnets with high field strength such as uh, 3t 3T is a traditional MRI machine operated at a strength of 1.5 uh, Tesla. A Tesla is a unit of a measurement uh, quantifying the strength of a magnet field. A 3T MRI is generated as a magnet uh, field that is twice as strong as a normal MRI and 10 to 15 times as strong as open MRI scanner. What kind of MRI do we have? Uh, one point five Tesla. the use <clears throat> the use of endorector coil and the development of uh, a novel set of imaging sequences that can be used in combination so called multi parametric mri to improve both lesion identification and characterization so uh, now we will talk about the multi parametric mri multi parametric mri can be briefly summarized as a method of trying to obtain an ideal three-dimensional uh, prostate image by combining uh, T2-weighted imaging, uh, diffusion-weighted, and dynamic contrast enhance, enhanced. So I think uh, the first is the diffusion-weighted imaging with an apparent diffusion coefficient, uh, which I'll tell about the cellularity of the tissue. And T2-weighted imaging, which defines anatomy of the prostate, and dynamic intravenous contrast enhanced. Dr. Amit, can you explain uh, what kind of this imaging is this? Diffusion weighted imaging and dynamic intra intravenous contrast enhanced imaging. Uh, now modern, even it is very common to see the prostate cancer on without uh, T2 because T2 is not as much gold standard remain is the for the prostate cancer. Diffusion weighted image is must required because diffusion weighted we is the basic upon the principle upon the osmosis of water molecules <coughs> in the any lesion. So that is uh, if the water molecule uh, transfer is restricted, that shows the restriction. So depend upon that basic rule, the any tumor or any abscess which can also restrict the water molecule. Which can area is appear as a DW right on ADC appear hypotensive, hypotensive. So that on this basic rule that we apply on the prostatic cancer and easily pick up the, the lesion, even in small lesion, less than 1.5 centimeter lesion, which is easily missed on the normal D2 weighted images. So that is the diffusion weighted technology is uh, easily applicable and uh, very increase the yield of the prostatic cancer. And uh, how the concern about the dynamic contrast imaging, which is also imaging technique, which is <coughs> upon the, which is also simple rule, just like the uh, RCC, that is the lesion easily the early contrast announcement and early washout, just like RCC. So that the dynamic contrast imaging, when we inject the contrast, the lesion picked up the contrast uh, compared to the prostatic pentagon, and it is a uh, easily early wash out so that we can pick the lesion that is the lesion that is a very important technique in the in the pirates technique pirates plus protection okay can we have all these three imaging modalities uh, on 1.5 test um, sir that is uh, depend upon the software 1.5 tesla machine is uh, if the software is updated especially pwi is uh, Easily available on the 1.5 Tesla, but uh, unfortunately, it's a software update in the other department is not is new. But in the most of machine like uh, KU 1.5 Tesla, they are using the diffusion technique. 
from the one decade, but is not available in the world, unfortunately. But United is not technology, not test newer now because uh, very old technique and the large, just like a uh, brain in fact that also diffusion related may deploy upon the technique. So the indication for multiparametric MRI in local staging T2 versus T3 disease, detection of clinically significant prostate cancer, localization, catheterization, recurrent disease, and also the for the focal therapy. T2 weighted images uh, for the prostate carcinoma. For the peripheral zone tumor, low, uh, low T2 signal intensity replacing the normal high T2 signal intensity in the peripheral zone. In the transitional zone tumor, a homogeneous low signal intensity region in the transition zone, poorly defined air uh, speculated lesion margins, lack of a low signal intensity uh, seen commonly in associated with benign uh, adenomatous nodules, and interruption of the surgical CDU capsule. And also for the urethral or anterior fibromuscular stromal invasion and lenticular shape. So this is the T2 weighted imaging. This one, this is the normal prostate, peripheral zone is high signal intensity. And multi nodular hypo intense lesion in the transition zone, this one. And also the, in the prostate cancer, this is the peripheral zone, signal intensity area of low signal intensity in the left uh, peripheral zone of the prostate. Transition zone, uh, the better using of T2-weighted imaging is for the transition zone. So this uh, picture, the T2-weighted uh, uh, imaging is the normal for the transition zone, appears, procedures appear normal. In the T2-weighted imaging, this one is this is the hypo-intense or heterogeneous encapsulated area on the left side of the prostate, in the left uh, transition zone of the prostate. This one is the heterogeneous and encapsulated area. And uh, T2 uh, weighted imaging, and this is the heterogeneous signal intensity with obscure margin of the lesion that do not fall in other categories. Just like this. So uh, the T2 weighted imaging is better for the transition zone. And this one is the lenticular or non circumscribed uh, homogeneous modalities and also the hypointense area. The fifth is also the similar to the fourth one. So the, uh, the T2 weighted imaging is better used for the transition zone. And now the peripheral zone, uh, diffusion weighted imaging or ADC uh, for the uh, peripheral zone, this one, this is the peripheral zone, which is normal. And this is the indistinct hypo intense area in the peripheral zone. And Images the focal uh, mild to moderate hypo intense area and the peripheral zone of the prostate. And this one is the uh, hypo intense area. Markedly, uh, in this picture in the uh, diffusion weighted imaging, also the markedly hyper intense. So, in the peripheral zone, in the ADC, this area is the hypo intense and focal. Mark Lee, this one. Fourth is also similar to the five. So T2-weighted extracapsular extension, asymmetry of the neurovascular bundles, uh, tumor engagement of the neurovascular bundle, a bulging uh, uh, prosthetic counter, and an irregular speculated margins of the capsule and obliteration of the retroprostatic angle and capsule retraction 
in the tumor capsule enter enter for of greater than one centimeter and a breach of the capsule with evidence of direct tumor extension. So this is the uh, feature of seminal vesicle invasion. <clears throat> this picture is the axial section of titubated imaging at the level of the uh, uh, prosthetic base to, uh, to demonstrate the low signal intensity replacing the normal signal intensity of the left peripheral zone with direct tumor extension from the base of the prostate into both seminal vesicle. So <laughs> disruption or loss of the normal architecture of the seminal vesicle, focal low signal intensity within and along the seminal vesicle, enlarged low signal intensity ejaculate reducts and seminal vesicle, obliteration of the angle between the prostate and seminal vesicle, and demonstration, demonstration of the direct tumor extension from the base of the prostate end to end around the seminal vesicle. <clears throat> so this one, the, the T2 weighted imaging uh, drawbacks or some of the, some prostate tumor are SO intense. And the, this is the picture of the T1 weighted imaging. There is a high signal intensity on T1 weighted imaging in the right uh, peripheral zone of the prostate with uh, little uh, signal reduction on the T2 weighted imaging. In the little signal reduction and no restricted diffusion on uh, diffusion weighted imaging. So, limited specificity because of their or other possible cases of low T2 signal, uh, including hemorrhage, uh, prostatitis, scaring, atrophy, and effect of radiation therapy, cryosurgery, or hormonal therapy. So post biopsy hemorrhage may hamper tumor detection. So uh, the image appearing depend on the length of uh, time between the biopsy and um, MR uh, imaging at least a delay of uh, six to eight weeks arising in the uh, six weeks as recommended and prostate cancer arising in the transition zone poses additional. Now we come to the diff diffusion weighted images. So reduced diffusion of water in prostate cancer has been attributed to the increased cellularity of malignant lesions with reduction of the extracellular space and restriction of the motion of a larger portion of water molecule into the intracellular space. Therefore, diffusion-weighted imaging provide an imported quantitative biophysical parameter that can be used to differentiate benign from malignant prostate tissue. Dynamic contrast enhancement uh, MR imaging is on advanced prostate uh, imaging modalities that allows uh, derivation of parameters that are closely related to microvascular properties and angiogenesis in tissues. And prostate cancer increased tumor vascular, uh, vascularity leads to early uh, hyper enhancement, higher and earlier peak enhancement uh, than in normal tissue and to rapid washout of contrast material from the tumor in comparison with normal prostate tissue. So microvascular uh, alterations and neurovascularity are in general most severe in prostate cancer. In comparison with other uh, processes in the prostate such as BPH or prostatic endroepithelial neoplasia. Now we will talk about the parades. Uh, parades uh, as a, a system used to categorize and assess all focal uh, endoglandular prostate nodules seen on MRI. The system includes uh, technical standards for scanning hardware and protocols for imaging acquisition and interpretation and interpretations. It also provides standardized terminology for reporting and a sector map for all location with the gland. The parade assessment categories are best on the findings of uh, multi-parametric MRI, which is combination of T2-weighted imaging, diffusion-weighted imaging, and dynamic contrast-enhanced imaging. 
the thyroid system uh, categorizes prostate lesions based on the likelihood of cancer according to a five point scale defined as the following the thyroid thyroid one has the very low uh, clinically significant cancer highly unlikely thyroid two has the low clinically significant cancer unlikely the thyroid three uh, uh, intermediate uh, clinically significant of cancers is equivocal and thyroid four is uh, thyroid four high clinically significant cancer is likely and thyroid five score is very high so the clinically significant cancer is high likely uh, parents assessment categories Uh, assessment of a parrot assessment categories for each lesion is based on the uh, scoring of T2 weighted imaging, diffusion weighted imaging, and uh, dynamic contrast enhancement sequences according to the zonal anatomy. So uh, the peripheral zone, the peripheral zone is situated on the uh, uh, posterior and lateral side of the prostate surrounding the transition zone for the for the uh, peripheral zone, the diffusion weighted imaging is the primary uh, determining sequences dominant technique to assign the parallel assessment categories. Which so this one, this is the uh, peripheral zone. So in the peripheral zone, diffusion weighted imaging in the thyroid one score is uh, will be normal. In the parallel two score, the diffusion weighted imaging is will be indistinct hypointense area will be seen in the peripheral zone in the diffusion weighted imaging and parallel three scoring uh, and the diffusion weighted imaging the peripheral zone will be seen mild to moderate hypointense uh, area on the peripheral zone and parallel four uh, uh, the in the peripheral zone uh, zone the diffusion weighted imaging will be seen focal markedly hypointense area. And thyroid five uh, in the diffusion weighted imaging, the peripheral zone will be seen similar to four, but uh, more than one five four centimeter are the definitely extra prosthetic extension. In the transition zone, the uh, better uh, image to use for the transition zone is already uh, we talk about it in the T2 uh, weighted imaging. In the T2 weighted imaging, the transition zone will be appear in the pyrrhid one score will be appear normal. In the pyrrhid two scoring, the transition zone will be appear uh, circumscribed hypointense or heterogeneous encapsulated nodules in the transition zone on the T2 weighted imaging. In the pyrrhid three scoring, and for the transition zone. The uh, hetero the Ferrer three score will be seen heterogeneous signal intensity with uh, obscured margin or lesion that do not fall in other categories. In the Ferrer four, the transition zone and the T two weighted imaging will be appear lenticular or non circumscribed homogeneous moderately hypointense. In the Ferrer five. The transition zone will be seen on the T2 weighted imaging similar to uh, four, but more than one foot five centimeter or definitive extra prosthetic extension. Dr. Amit, uh, pirate scoring does not include the central zone. So how will he uh, score the pirate scoring of central zone? If so, there is, there is a chance of 5% tumor in the central zone of, in, uh, in CAP. So how will we categorize the pyrid scoring in central zone tumor? The recommendation is uh, rely on the T2 images because the diffusion weighted sequences in the transitional or central zone is not as much yield as compared to the peripheral zone. It also has been pointed out earlier that is because of a node diffusion restriction, multiple nodules is already because of BPH is there. So they're difficult to see on the diffusion weighted imaging and diffusion restriction. So that more rely on the T2 imaging because the T2 images is, is uh, show the high point there, but it's not as gold standard as that of a peripheral zone. So that is the uh, some no not as much sensitive T2 is even in T2 imaging in the central zone for the detecting the tumors 
but uh, only his tool is a T2 and uh, dynamic contrast imaging. So that we can be helpful. But if there any suspicions is uh, still high, though, for some time new technique like the MRS can be helpful, which is very important technique in which we can see the metabolite like choline to citrate ratio, which can increase the ratio that is a yield the more. The ratio is about, if the ratio is 0.5, the non-significant, if the ratio is more than two, that is a quite suspicious, is a yielding to high ratio, so that is a yielding the tumor suspicious is high. So that in that case, we can raise the possibility of this. So the newer modality has been helpful, but T2 imaging, unfortunately, not it, it as much in giving the tumor in the central zone. Second question is, can we calculate pirate with the current um, infrastructure that we have with us? So basically, uh, we are already said that the diffusion sequence is very important in this, uh, most of tumor in the ventral zone. Unfortunately, the diffusion rate is available in the world department, but not as uh, uh, high frequency or high yield because of uh, they're not giving the high resolution images. Sometimes it's the ones in the I see the diffusion rate sequences uh, which give the good result, but it's a hundred patient, only one patient has been good result has been updated. So that is actually the not as much software available, so that we are not uh, in detail uh, reporting of pirates. Because it's important to have a diffusion sequence and also dynamic delta sometimes is important because of uh, which is also can increase the yield. So that is uh, on this machine is uh, when you're able to report as a pirates, uh, which can be reported, but is uh, not possible. So is it the uh, software or is it uh, the endorectal coil? Endorectal coil is uh, give the more result, but uh, Software is very important and, the, and machine strength is good. If the machine strength is increased like a three Tesla, even if we have the uh, endorectal coil, which can increase the yield. The endorectal coil only yields uh, which is uh, uh, those patients who have highly suspicious that can uh, even which not yield on the uh, current MRI on three Tesla, then in which case the three uh, high uh, endorectal coil has been used because endorectal coil is the also, most of patient is uncomplied with endorectal coil because of uh, we putting endorectal coil for half hour and patient is uh, not as much uh, comply on the endorectal coil. But endorectal coil is uh, increase the yield, no doubt, because of uh, is close to the surface of prostate, so that it gives a good high resolution images. But endorectal coil is not as much required each and every patient. Only required when the the result became equivocal on the current MRI. In these patients, we can do endorectal coil. So, uh, the PET scan. Uh, PET uses compound label with uh, positron emitting uh, radioisotopes to detect uh, pathologic uh, processes. Most uh, uh, clinical PET studies uh, to date have been uh, performed with the glucose analog chlorine at 10 and fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG. Can cells have increased metabolism and utili uh, utilize the less efficient glycolytic pathway, both of which lead to increased uh, glucose analog uptake. Increased glucose uptake and metabolism in tumor are facilitated by an elevated expression of glucose transporters, which has been shown in several cancers. The, uh, the magnitude of the elevated uh, FDG uptake and accumulation in tumors is commonly expressed by the standardized uptake value defined as the ratio of activity per uh, unit mass in the lesion. The teaching points for the PET scan is FDG is limited because of the relatively low glucose metabolism of most prostate tumors but FDG may have a role in uh, response assessment of OCS disease in meta uh, metastatic castration resistant prostatic cancer and as a prognostic indicator. So 11 carbon choline and 18 uh, fluorine choline are uh, sensitive and specific for disease detection in high risk uh, staging in biochemical relapse after radical therapy in patient with high PSA level and high PSA velocities. So uh, 68 gallium PSA is uh, highly sensitive for biochemical 
relapse after radical therapy in patient with lower pH level compared with 11 carbon choline and 18 uh, fluorine choline. Significance of PET scan in uh, prostate cancer. PET imaging become relevant because of the limitation of conventional structure imaging and uh, the staging of extra prostatic disease. And the restaging of prost uh, prostate cancer patients after biochemical relapse and in response assessment. So the various PET addresser have been investigated for their use in prostate cancer and thus far five have been approved by uh, the FDA. FDG uh, uh, benefit for the prostate cancer is very limited uh, for the to uh, response assessment of the OCS disease and metastatic gestation resistant prostate cancer. And uh, carbon uh, choline or fluorine uh, choline uh, uh, in the large studies uh, the role in prostate cancer is the highest staging biochemical relapse and the high PSA levels. And uh, gallium uh, uh, PSMA ligands uh, as a, in the large studies, this also role in prostate cancer imaging is the biochemical relapse at low PSA level. Uh, if sodium fluoride, the osteoblastic activity and bone, uh, the benefit for the prostate cancer is just for the bone metastatic only. And if uh, uh, flow uh, cyclovin uh, is the initial result uh, role in the prostate cancer is undergoing elevation but appears superior to cooling in the setting of biochemical relapse. So the radionuclide bone scanning uh, it has no role in uh, prostate cancer detection or local stage. However, bone scanning continues to be uh, the mainstay of diagnosis of initial spread of cancer to the bone for the bone emits. A focal area of increased stressor uptake usually in the axial skeleton related to host astroblastic bone response to tumor invasion. However, other causes of altered uh, marrow signal intensity uh, for instance, infection, uh, uh, infarction, trauma, and can mimic a metastatic disease at uh, MRI. This is the uh, picture of the bone skin. This is the skeletal scintigraphy. And this bone skin show in the increased tracer concentration involving most of the axil and appendicular skeleton. So this is the bony mids which on the bone skin. Radionuclide bone scanning. Uh, radionuclide bone scanning can also be used to assess the response to treatment as a peak usually decrease, decreases after chemotherapy, hormonal therapy or radiation therapy if a, a response is obtained. And patients with prostate and breast cancer of flare uh, phenomenon may be observed where uptake initially increases after chemotherapy or hormonal therapy, peaking at six weeks after treatment uh, uh, as bone turnover increases as part of the healing process. Care must be taken in this situation to avoid mistaking apparent new lesion for area of new metastatic disease when subtle changes were in fact present in prior studies. So I already talked about this. The newer technology, uh, the use of a micro bubble ultrasound contrast agent for transrectal color doubler targeted biopsy significantly improved the detection of the prostate cancer compared with uh, systematic, uh, systematic biopsy following conventional grayscale ultrasonography. In the first picture, the conventional grayscale, the conventional grayscale ultrasonogram show homogeneous uh, echo texture with no definite focal lesion. And the picture B, the contrast agent in his color Doppler ultrasonogram show one small hypervascular area on the right side of the prostate. Oh, so this is the last slide. The, uh, the last the nano bubble ultrasound has already we talk about that you ultrasound uh, imaging is routinely used to guide uh, prostate biopsies 
yet uh, delineation of tumor within the prostate gland is extremely challenging even with uh, micro bubble contrast latest studies are focusing on evaluating the application of a novel nano bubble ultrasound contrast agent targeted to the prostate specific membrane antigen in ultrasound imaging of prostate cancer and experiment or uh, a bearing uh, proton animal models thank, thank you. you very much